Hello everybody. Let's talk infrared. Now I uh, purchased a film camera a while ago and I have been shooting infrared 35mm film on it for a while now and uh, not only am I loving the images that it's giving me I am thoroughly enjoying doing it. Now I'm going to talk about that in a minute but I do appreciate that it's not everybody that wants to go back to the days of film. So infrared, if you are interested, can be shot on digital. There are two ways of doing it. The first is to get your camera converted, which they take the high pass filter out, which is the filter that blocks infrared light. Now this costs about two to three hundred pounds to do. And the only downside of that is that that is all the camera can be used for is infrared. So you have to be pretty sure you're going to be dedicated to doing it. The positive side of that is that once it's been converted, you just take the images as you would on a conventional camera, which is a positive. Now, I haven't actually sort of done any of this on digital, so I'm not an expert. And if you are interested, it would pay you to sort of investigate it a bit further. The other way you can use digital is to buy yourself an infrared filter. The Hoya R72 seems to be the filter of choice. And you can put this on the front of the lens once you have reset your white balance within the camera. Uh, again, you need to investigate into that further. The uh, positive sides of this is obviously you haven't uh, had to spend the money and made a camera useless for anything else. The downside is that the filter is so dense that you cannot see through the viewfinder. So you have to compose your image and focus it before you put the filter on and also get your light settings. The other drawback is that because this filter is so dense, we're talking about probably five stops difference. So it obviously has to be put on a tripod um, because we're talking roughly about a second exposure. So obviously that can't be handheld. That is the pluses and minuses of digital. As I say, if you're interested in doing that, it would pay you to investigate it a bit further. So let's talk infrared film. I've been using Roly Infrared 400, which I was actually told that was the only infrared film available these days. But I did find a couple of others on the market, but I haven't tried those. So I can only give you my findings of the Roly. Now, the biggest hurdle I had to cross was working out the exact exposure because we have this very dense filter on the front. And I actually used about four rolls of film uh, before I sort of could suss out uh, the exact setting. Uh, but even uh, having done that, it will pay to take one frame either side of that setting just to be on the safe side. Now we're talking about five stops of light that this filter absorbs. So we're obviously going to have to put the camera on a tripod because we're talking fairly slow shutter speeds of around anywhere around about one to four seconds. Because what you have to bear in mind with infrared, it is taken in bright sunlight for your best results because that is the time that infrared is reflected off trees and things like that. So whereas normally you'd be out doing a landscape photography and it's a bright sunny day, you'd probably go home. But with infrared, it's the complete opposite. That is ideal conditions. After experimenting, I did find that five stops of light was around about right. And I'm going to show you a few examples of exposures either side of that, just to give you an idea of the effect that it has. Now, the other thing you have to take into consideration is your focus plane is different for infrared. It is actually nearer than ordinary conventional photography. 
I have a few old Nikon lenses and they actually have a red mark on them which indicates the infrared scale. So you have to focus the lens obviously without the filter on because you couldn't see it otherwise and then you just turn the lens um, back to this red dot. Unfortunately on more modern lenses they do not have this setting so it's all a little bit guesswork but I've certainly found that this is pretty accurate with the older lenses. I must say that some of the newer lenses as well with the uh, coatings that they have you can get hot spots in the center of the image. I think there is information out there as to uh, lenses that are and are not suitable for infrared so that's worth looking into but if you're only shooting on older lenses you should be absolutely fine. So we have the camera on the tripod we focused it, we've composed the image. So now we put the R72 filter on the front. And I'm now going to take uh, a light reading. I actually purchased a, a Western incident light meter uh, for this job, which seems to be uh, a very good as far as I can tell. And once you've taken the reading, you set your camera to plus five stops and take the image now as i say probably take it five stops six stops and four stops just to be on the safe side so here we have four images uh taken at different uh settings this was uh plus five this was plus six plus seven and plus eight now as you can see this first one at plus five I think that's pretty good you've got good detail in the dark areas you've got good detail in the uh, highlights and uh, a good tonal range all round um, plus six uh, yeah it's okay you've got perhaps more infrared effect but you do start to lose the detail plus seven uh, and plus eight I think are a little bit over the top certainly by the time you get to plus eight you're losing all the detail so I think plus five is probably a sweet spot um, but as I say if you take one either side of that then it's up to you what uh, you think makes for a good image now out of the four rolls of film which I've taken I've actually ended up with three that I'm happy with and I'm going to put a question mark with one of those and that is this one now I had a very high expectations for this uh, and it took me a lot of uh, sort of visits to this graveyard to get this image and I, I really as I say had high hopes but looking at it closer looking at it further sleeping on it I really uh, it didn't do it for me um, but uh, I'd like to know what you guys think now the second one is this which I've just been showing you this I, I didn't really think this was going to work and when I first looked at it I, I thought yeah not not uh, not that great but it grew on me and I actually ended up thinking there is definitely something about this that I like. So it was actually an image which I ended up um, keeping and liking a lot. Now this final image here, I was really, really chuffed with this one. It again, when I took it, I wasn't too sure how it was going to work out. But I love it and I'm going to show you in um, iColorama the setting I did to this image and the other two to get the uh, final effect because it was the same on all three pretty much give or take. So let's have a look at iColorama and I'll put up the original image and show you what I did to it. So here we have the image of the tree opened up in iColorama. And I absolutely loved this image as it was. But I was playing around uh, and in effects there's a setting called glow. And I, I thought that really was quite something. 
um, but it was a bit over the top I've been losing detail in the highlight so I turned it down to about 50% opacity which I think was a sweet spot for that so if we go up here and do that's before and that's after before and after yeah I love that and I actually uh, did that setting in the other two images which I've just shown you and I think it suits infrared but we have then opened up this image in Capture NX2 and just tweaked around with the contrast and so on and this was the final image well hey I hope this video has been interesting to you uh, if not even educational um, perhaps it's inspired you to give infrared a go whether it be try and work out digital or get yourself a cheap film camera and give film a go a lot of fun I have enjoyed going back to those days I've got to admit so yeah if you uh, feel so inclined to support my channel you could do so in the link uh, below in Kofi that's always much much appreciated and uh, I'm not too sure what the next video is going to be about but I'm sure something will come into my head so until that time this is John Dexter saying thanks very much for coming along and watching bye for now